Good morning. Today we're having our devotion time together outside. My dog always gets me up early in the morning. You know how dogs are, right? And so we take a walk. And so I thought today I would uh, pause and, and spend my quiet time out here. Um, I often will use my walk as a prayer time, but um, that's really what I was going to focus on today, talking to you and um, sharing with you a little bit about my prayers and um, and then maybe some things you want to incorporate into your prayer life. Um, I've been reading and I've printed it out really big because I uh, don't want to be wearing my glasses when I'm outside. Sometimes there's too much glare. You know, I really need to get prescription glasses that are sunglasses. Don't you know that feeling too? Um, so anyways, um, I'm reading from Luke uh, a couple of verses. Well, actually, I'm not going to read those verses because you can go back and read those on your own. Um, Luke 11 and Luke 18 are verses that uh, Jesus was talking about prayer and about how to be persistent in our prayer. In, in 11, he talks about the man who knocks on the friend of his, his, his friend's door late at night after the guy's gone to bed and he's persistently asking for, um, for bread. And the guy's like, rolling over, doesn't want to get up. But finally he gets up just because the guy's so audacious that he's coming and late at night and persistently knocking. He just gives him the bread to get rid of him. And then uh, again in Luke 18, uh, Jesus gives the parable about a widow who goes to a judge and she just won't give it up. You know, she's just demanding justice. She just keeps coming back and back and back until finally he just says, okay, I'm going to give her the justice she's asking for. And so that those both of those parables, he's talking to us about our prayer life. He wants us to be audacious in how we pray. He wants us to be persistent in how we pray. So um, my verses that I'm going to read you, uh, Colossians 4, verse 2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And then Jeremiah 33, um, verse 3, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So our prayer life, um, years ago I read uh, the book of Jeremiah. You may want to go back and read that entire book. It's an amazing book. Um, but Jeremiah was in prayer because his, his um, country and his city, Jerusalem, was under siege and uh, he was calling uh, out, well, they, they weren't in under siege yet, but he was calling out on their behalf because things weren't going well. And God was giving him visions for what God was going to do. Uh, Jeremiah 31 specifically, um, God gives five promises to uh, Jeremiah about what he will do if the people will be persistent in reaching out and calling out and talking to him in, in prayer. And, you know, it's about gathering them to himself, um, bringing them freedom. He will be meeting their needs, you know. Um, so go back and read those. So those are things that kind of set a foundation for my prayer time. But specifically in this um, pause, as I mentioned last time I spoke with you in a devotional, you know, during this pause, I've really... Um, been focused on my own prayer and I and I urge you to consider focusing on what you're praying for. You know, often we we'll bring up our own needs. Not wrong to do that. Like the uh, you know, the the friend who was knocking on the door saying, I give me bread and the guy gives him bread. So so that kind of speaks to um, you know, our needs. The the widow also, she she wanted justice. You know, we need to be praying for justice. And, and even if we feel we've been wronged, it's not bad to pray for justice. Yes, let's be persistent in doing that in our own lives. But often that's all we do. We Our prayer life kind of stops there in what we want, what we need. Um, and then some of us may expand beyond that and then just talk to God. And, you know, we, we do bring up thanks and praise and those absolutely Absolutely, we need to be doing those things. But what I'm talking about during this opportunity for all of us is to bring in this other thing, which is in Ezekiel 22, verse 30. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand for me in the gap on behalf of the land. I want you to know that's what we have an opportunity to do. Those of us who follow Christ, we get to stand in the gap for those we love that don't know Christ, for those in our community who are hurting right now, 
who are frightened. You know, there's an interesting phenomena that's taking place. I, as many of you know, I'm the executive director of Azimuth Counseling. So I'm in touch with the mental health community, um, and I'm aware that all of us are seeing, not just at Asmuth, but all of us are seeing those who had counselors before COVID-19 restrictions, some of them are still connecting online with their counselors, but very few new people are reaching out. There's there's probably a reason for this. And, and one of the reasons I wonder about is that people are still a little bit in shock. Um, they're just kind of ba- getting their basic needs met. And so those of us who know Christ, I'm not saying we also wouldn't experience some shock in this time, but as we get our feet under us, we need to be thinking about how to stand in the gap for our, for our community, for our state, for our world right now. And that's not grandiose. You know, that's what we're called in Ezekiel. That's what was being um, asked for. God was looking for people to stand in the gap. Um, That's what I want to change up in my own prayer life. I want to be standing in the gap. I have a prayer time that I use every morning, but, you know, sometimes it does get a little stale. It's about what I want, what I need. It's not wrong, but I don't always stand in the gap. And uh, some of what I'm doing now in this COVID-19, I ask that you join me to stand in the gap. Pray for those who do not know Christ. They do not know the freedom in Christ. They don't know that they are dearly loved children of God and that in this time there could become a renewal of that, an awakening, just as uh, spring is awakening all around us. It's one of the reasons I love being in the woods. It changes all the time. I love the woods in the fall. I love the woods in the summer. I love the woods in the winter. I love the woods in the spring. It changes and, and spring especially gives us this idea of renewal. And so today, I want you to think about your prayer life as an opportunity to pray for renewal in yourselves, in your community, and in our world, a renewal of a longing for a deep connection to God, to an awareness and asking for, who is this Jesus? Who, how can he be a part of my life? What do I need to do? And then you and I, and those of us who know Christ, we can stand in the gap and pray for those that uh, don't know where to turn, don't know who Christ is. They don't, they know there's a God, they can see it in nature, but maybe they don't know who this God is, the creator triune God that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we have been blessed to know. Let's share that blessing. And in our prayer time, we can stand in the gap. We can pray for our community. Now, I am going to add that over at Azimuth, we are therapists. There's there's five of us. Um, you know, we used to not have opportunities. We couldn't meet the needs of the people calling in, but we do have, we have time. So if you need to talk to a therapist, please call Asmuth. Um, you know, uh, the number is 288-1001, or you can contact me, Wilkins at asmuthcounseling.org. The only reason I'm saying that is because There are therapists there who understand and will incorporate this faith perspective if you choose to do that. And so if you need to reach out and talk to someone right now who understands this faith perspective, you can find that at Azimuth. But you can have this renewal in your heart between you and God if you enrich your prayer time by asking God what would you have me to do and just then pray for your community pray for yourself first to have a renewal a renewal of longing for connection with Jesus Christ and then your community and then the world ask God to use this time and tell God you're willing to stand in the gap along with other believers to bring about a renewal to bring about these promises that you have for when we turn our hearts to you. So I'd like to pray right now for us to stand in this gap. Let me read it one more time. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. I looked for someone, this is God talking, I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land. That's what we are going to do this morning. So join me in prayer.
Father God, thank you that you are creating the conditions for renewal in my heart, in the hearts of those listening today, in the hearts of our community, in the hearts of our, our country, and our, in the hearts of those in the world. Father, we know you didn't cause this, but we know that you can be working if you would have your people standing in the gap, praying for your revival. Help us to be ready with an answer whenever we are asked. Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to spend time through this technology with those that call you Lord and Savior. I ask that you would enrich each one's prayer time beginning today. Help them to be persistent as you have helped me to be persistent and help us all to be audacious in how we, we request you meet the needs of our world at this time the needs of the church, the needs of our communities, and each one in our own hearts, our needs too. We thank you. We often bring those first, but we thank you that you care as much about us as you care about the entire world. Thank you for that. And in Jesus' name, I ask that you would put this renewal in each of our hearts and in our world today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.